with a doubling problem here. We have 100 bacteria in a Petri dish. It doubles every hour. Predict when the number of bacteria will be 350,000. So if you recall, our doubling formula said that um, our population at some time t was equal to our initial population, our base was 2, and that's raised to the t. Okay. You just have to make sure that you're careful with your units with the t. Okay, so let's fill in the pieces here. The um, 100 bacteria, that's our P sub 0, our initial population. Predict when, that means T is what we're looking for. T is our variable. We've got to leave it as T. The number of bacteria will be 350,000. That is our population at some time T. That is the left side of this equation here. Okay, so to solve, we need to divide by that coefficient of 100. I guess what, when you divide by 100, you're just canceling zeros here, so that reduces us to 3,500 is equal to 2 to the t. Now, um, can't write 3,500 as a power of 2. Okay, can't write that as a power of 2, so that means we need to write this in logarithmic form. Okay, the base of the exponential is the same as the base of the logarithm and the other two pieces switch places so that's log base 2 of 3500 is equal to t this is an application problem so while i want just your sheer uh, your problems when it's just equations there's no context i want you to leave it in logarithmic form like that application problem we want an actual answer so we need to evaluate that you have to use your change of base formula, log of 3,500 divided by the log of 2. I cannot stress enough that you make sure that you close your parentheses right there. That will mess up your answer a lot, okay, if you don't. Uh, let's round to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so that would be almost 12 hours. Almost 12 hours, excuse me. Um, so... If, Honestly, in the grand scheme of things, that, that's pretty quick, isn't it? If you start with 100 and after 12 hours you have 350,000, it's a little scary when you're talking about germs, right? Uh, <clears throat> so it doesn't take very long when you're doubling every hour. Okay, and I knew that my units here were hours because they told me that it doubled every hour. Okay, let's talk about half-life problem. Suppose the half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 20 days and there are 5 grams present initially. Okay, so here's our half-life. Remember the half-life was N in our formula. We have 5 grams present initially. That's our initial population, P sub 0. Find the time. That means we're looking for T when there will be one gram of the substance remaining. That is our P of T. We don't know what time, but that is our population at a particular time. So just a reminder of our half-life formula, P of T is equal to P sub zero. The base this time is one half to the T divided by N, where N was the length of the half-life. <clears throat> Technically, with the doubling problem that we just did, we could have also divided T by N. Um, I didn't in that case because it was doubling every hour. We would have been dividing by 1. But if that had said like doubling every 2 hours, then I would have divided my T by 2. Okay? Um, but if it's just like 1 or something like that, you really don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> Let's fill in our pieces. Okay, P of T is 1. P sub 0 is 5. Our base is 1 half. T is what we're looking for, N is the length of our half-life, which in this problem is 20 days. Divide by the coefficient, divide by 5, 
1 fifth is equal to 1 half to the t over 20. We cannot write 1 fifth and 1 half uh, with the same base. So we just need to go to logarithmic form here. Log base 1 half. Again, that doesn't happen very often that we have a fractional base. But in half-life problems, it does. Log base 1 half of 1 fifth is equal to t over 20. We've got one more step here, though. We're dividing by 20, so we need to multiply both sides by 20. The 20 goes in front of the logarithm. It's not changing the 1 fifth. Again, you cannot change what is inside of a logarithm without using properties of logarithms. So we have 20 times the log of 1 fifth, close the parentheses, divided by the log of the base, 1 half. And our answer here is 46.43. And what are our units? Days. Okay, always, always, always provide units with these problems. Okay, now I always also encourage you to use some common sense. When we're talking about half-life, okay, half-life just means that after that period of time, there is half of the substance that you started with. So we started with five grams. So somebody tell me, after 20 days, how many grams of this substance are we going to have? 2.5. After 20 days, we have half of what we started with. So after 20 days, we got 2.5. After 20 more days, how much are we going to have? 1.25. That's not quite what we want. We want 1 gram. Okay, so we're at a total of 40 days so far. If we went 20 more days, what's half of 1.25? You use your calculator. Hmm? What is it? Point, I, I'm having a brain. 0.65. Okay. <clears throat> 0.65. So that's less than we want. So we know that our answer should be between 40 and 60 days. Okay. 40 and 60 days. Our answer should be somewhere in between there probably closer to the 40 end because after 40 days we had 1.25 so we need just a little bit less than that uh, <clears throat> so our answer makes sense think about it before you just leave the answer and move on to the next problem make sure it makes sense we could have also done that with the doubling problem it was just bigger numbers this one's fairly manageable to to think through that way Okay, now, this is a new type of problem. Uh, there are lots of variables involved, but it's really not that bad. You just, you got to follow me, and you got to stop me if I start going too fast, okay? Hmm? Okay, so let's identify all these different amounts in our problem. Uh, the egg at temperature 96 degrees Celsius, that is the initial temperature, is placed in 16 degrees Celsius water to cool. That is the temperature of our medium. Four minutes later, the temperature of the egg is 45 degrees Celsius. That is T of 4. And four minutes is right now our T. Use Newton's law of cooling to determine when the egg will be 20 degrees Celsius. So that's another T that we're going to be solving for after we use the first one. Okay, so let's plug these pieces into our model and see what we're looking at. Okay, 45 degrees Celsius is the T of 4 right now. T sub M is 16 plus T sub 0 is 96 minus T sub M 16 E to the negative K, we don't know K, times T 
Right now, that is 4. Okay, so this is nice. We only have one variable. Okay, that's good. Not good when we have more than one variable. Okay, let me simplify this a little bit before we start solving. 96 minus 16 is 80. And I'm just going to rewrite that as negative 4k in the exponent. We just need to solve this like we've been solving our, all of our other equations. Okay, start by subtracting 16. 45 minus 16 is 29. That's equal to 80e to the negative 4k. Divide by 80. Do not believe that 29 over 80 simplifies, so I'm just going to leave that in fractional form. Well, we definitely cannot rewrite 29 over 80 as base e. So we need to write it in logarithmic form. The base is e, so what logarithm are we using? Natural log. Lovely. Natural log of 29 over 80 is equal to negative 4k. And we need to divide by negative 4. Now let me tell you this. I want you to leave it like that. I do not want an approximation for k. Okay, Leave k like that. Now, it is, I mean, it's okay if you type that into your calculator. Actually, I do want you to type it in your calculator, okay, because I, I want you to do something specific with it. I want you to do, type it in, negative natural log of 29 over 80. Okay, don't press enter yet, though. Okay, negative natural log of 29 over 80 divided by 4. Don't press enter yet. Have you ever noticed this button beside your number 1 that says STO with an arrow? Have you ever wondered what that's for? Okay, what that is, is your calculator will let you store values as variables. Okay, so press that button. And since we're using the variable K, let's roll with the K. Press alpha in your left parenthesis, and that will, uh, you should see a K. Now press enter. Okay, so what your calculator has done is it has taken that decimal value right there, and it has stored it in your calculator as K. Okay, I know some of you have done this before. You're trying to solve an equation, and you just type it into your calculator, and you put the X, and you press enter, and you get an answer. Okay, well, the reason why is because there is some number in your calculator stored as X, and your calculator is just plugging that value in, and it's just spitting it right back out to you. Okay, whatever number was stored as X, it plugs it in, and it gives you an answer based on that. It's not actually the answer. Okay, so we're going to store this as K, because we're going to need it here in a minute. Okay, the question, what, the question wasn't what is the constant of, of cooling here. The question is, when will the egg be 20 degrees Celsius? So we've got to set our problem back up again using some different values. Okay, so when will the egg be 20 degrees Celsius? That is our new T of T. We don't know the time. We're looking for the time. Okay, so 20 is going to go on that side of our equation. T sub M is still the same. The temperature of the medium is still 16. T sub 0 is still the same. The egg still started at 96 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius. Temperature of the medium is still 16. E to the negative, I'm going to leave it as, as K because I, I'm not going to type or I'm not going to write that number. I have it, I just solved for it, but I'm just going to keep the K there. Um, in the equation, just so I don't have to write so much. And then I'm going to solve it like I did before. Except this time I'm solving for t. So it looks like I have two variables. I really don't. I'm just leaving the k in there because it's stored in my calculator. Solve it just like I did. 20 minus 16 is 4. My numbers are just slightly different this time because I'm solving for a different uh, time, a different temperature. 
Divide by 80, 4 over 80 does reduce. 